Good evening, y'all. Thank you again for, for joining us for our virtual midweek. I know this is our second week of being online, and uh, as anxious and as excited as we are to get to meet in person, um, God has still blessed us with the means of YouTube and Facebook and Instagram to be able to continue to connect online. And so that's what we're going to do uh, until the 16th. I know originally I said the 9th uh, that we would meet again, but, but mark your calendars for September 16th. Uh, we are planning on meeting back uh, here on campus as we continue to evaluate each week um, back at school and at work and everything. And so the 16th is our tentative midweek relaunch. So mark that in your calendars. Go ahead and get ready for that. Because what we're going to do from now in September until about October and November is we're going to walk through a series together as a church. Uh, so whether it's children, youth, adults, we're going to walk together in a series all about Jesus. Uh, as, of course, church is, but this one is really going to hit on Jesus and it's really going to focus on his life. Uh, and so, again, mark your calendars for that. Uh, it's going to be an awesome series as we're kind of getting ready for it. But this week, we're, we're hitting a different topic. Uh, this week, we are hitting the age-old question of, what am I going to do when I grow up? What am I going to be? Really, what's my purpose? You know, what is our purpose? As, as believers or as, as someone growing up in the church and growing up in our families, we wonder, you know, what am I going to be when I grow up? You know, as a kid, I remember thinking because, you know, I was a Christian and I love football, then my purpose was to play in the NFL. We see the verse Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for a better future and, and, and for hope and to, to prosper you and not to harm you and all that stuff. And we think, well, if it's not to harm us and it's to prosper us, then our purpose is the thing that we enjoy the most. So as Christians, I mean, shouldn't we be able to do what we want? And, you know, as time went along, obviously, I'm not in the NFL, so my purpose wasn't to play in the NFL. And I wrestled with that, and I wrestled with not being able to, to do the things that I thought I wanted, and to do the things that I thought were aligned with my purpose. And so this week, we are going to hit on what's our purpose. You know, what does Scripture say our purpose truly is? Well, we see in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season, a time, for every purpose under heaven. So we have all been given a purpose. We've all been given a reason. You know, even if you're not a believer, God has put that in you to have a purpose and to have something that you look forward to and to have something that gives you uh, meaning or, or, or something that gives you a hope and that kind of pushes you along day by day. And recently, I've been watching this series called The Last Dance. And so if you're like, the small percentage of people like I was not too long ago that haven't heard of it about or haven't heard about it or seen it. It's the series that centers around Michael Jordan and the Bulls, the Chicago Bulls in the 80s and the 90s, and how this was undoubtedly the, the best team um, to come through the NBA. And as you watch this series, you see the drive and the dedication that, that Michael Jordan had. You see where he would skip parties and skip events and, and skip the fun stuff because all he looked forward to was being able to play. He just wanted to practice. He just wanted to get better. He wanted to be the greatest of all time. And I know there are LeBron fans out there and there are Kobe fans and there are different fans of maybe it's uh, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, all that. But Michael Jordan was and is the greatest basketball player of all time. And you'll believe it as soon as you watch this series, just to see how he just kind of uh, consumed basketball and how he took everything in and, and how he learned uh, to play the game. You would think that Michael Jordan was born to be a basketball player, but if you look even at his past, you, you see that, well, he didn't make varsity his sophomore year. And, and in college, his freshman year, he was a standout, but it took a lot of work to get there. Uh, he wasn't given the natural talents that a lot of players have had. He, he earned it and he worked for it. But even at the end of his career, you know, Michael Jordan's not a basketball player anymore. He's retired. He makes his money off of basketball and he still is known as the greatest player of all time, but he's not currently the greatest player in the NBA right now because he doesn't play. And so what I would say is Michael Jordan's purpose wasn't basketball. And that might sound crazy to you, but but I'll, maybe I'll put it in different terms. Maybe you're a music fan. You don't care at all about Michael Jordan or sports. Uh, maybe you think of another MJ when you think of greatest of all time. 
Maybe you think of the king of pop, Milo Jackson, and how from a kid he was set for stardom and he had all these fans and all the fame and all the money and everything, and, and Michael Jackson was the guy. But eventually Michael Jackson wasn't the guy. Now eventually he uh, retired and, and passed on, and he's not a singer forever. Or maybe for you, you think of the Beatles. Uh, the, the, the grandfathers, or the, excuse me, the godfathers of uh, pop and band and, and rock and things like that, and, and you think of the Beatles, but the Beatles kind of fizzled out. Right, the Beatles, the Beatles, they're not the greatest band of all time. So, like Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, the Beatles, you know, they're not. Their purpose wasn't music. Or maybe we think of Beethoven, not that Beethoven, that Beethoven, the one who kind of was like the the founding father of music that we know of now. To think that if if it wasn't for for this guy right here, we probably wouldn't have uh, rap or rock or any of the music we listen to now. So we can thank Beethoven for that. But Beethoven's purpose wasn't music. Or maybe you don't think of any of these. Maybe if you think it's rap, you think Run DMC or someone like that. Or you think pop, you think uh, Madonna or you think Justin Bieber. You know, just these big artists who are musicians. But none of their purpose or, you know, their careers or whatever, they didn't, it didn't give them purpose. Music didn't give them purpose. Basketball didn't give Michael Jordan purpose. Now, were they great musicians? Absolutely. Is Michael Jordan the greatest player of all time? Definitely. Absolutely. But their purpose isn't music. Their purpose isn't like what they do. Why? Because eventually they don't do those things anymore. And so it leads us to our first point about our purpose. It is that our purpose isn't found in our gifts, but it's found in the giver. It's found in the giver of the gifts. And so whenever we and, and these celebrities and artists and musicians and, and athletes try to find our purpose and our, our identity around our gifts, but not the giver, then we'll fall short every single time, right? Every single time we'll fall short. Um, kind of going on with Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This says that God, before we were even created, had laid out our path. And that our purpose is to be glorified in Christ and to, or excuse me, to glorify Christ and to glorify God and to, and to live in his purpose and in his will. You know, we see people in scripture all the time who, um, who had their purposes, right? We think of men like David, right? David was a great musician. He could play the harp. He was really good with a sling and a stone as we see there in the story of David and Goliath. We see that he was gifted. Even before that, he was a gifted hunter and a gifted shepherd. And as he became king, he was gifted with the, the ability to communicate with people. People followed David. People loved David. He had that gift. Or we think of men like, uh, like Moses, who was a leader. We think of just the innate ability to lead people, even though he was not the best of uh, speaking and things like that. He was still a great leader. Or we think of, of Samson. Right? Samson is like your biblical Hulk. He was a big guy with a great physique. Uh, he could probably bench five or six hundred pounds. Uh, He's probably a good looking guy. And people just flocked to him because he was a judge from God. He was someone who God used and had these great gifts and abilities. And maybe we think of Solomon. Solomon was this wise, wise man who, who had all the the wisdom, and, and I mean, if you looked at his kingdom, it looked beautiful, and, and he was able to, to collect a lot of followers, and people loved just to hear him talk because they wanted wisdom from him. Or maybe we think of someone like Paul, who had a pretty rough start in the Bible, but God knew what he had, right? Paul was great. Uh, he was a great teacher. He was studied up. He knew everything that he needed to know about Scripture, and God used that, and converted him and, and met him where he was as an evil person. And so he was able to connect with the Jew and the Gentile. But the thing with all these men that we see is that, yes, they were created by God. And originally maybe they did um, live to glorify Christ, or maybe they lived to, to show God to other people. But their downfall came whenever they tried to disconnect to their purpose from the one who gave them their purpose, God. And when we think of David, you know, he tried to take things into his own hands where he, 
he tried to be this uh, this leader that God had not told him that he should have been, and and he tried to to take all these wives, and he put himself in front of other people. Uh, but God said, if you're a man after my own heart, then then you'll follow me instead of trying to lead people the way that you think you should lead them. Or Samson, you know, we think of Samson in, in Scripture. He he had these abilities that God gave him, and his purpose should have been to deliver his people with his abilities, but he. He kind of got arrogant a little bit, and he wanted to do things his own way, and he fell into a trap. His hair was cut and his abilities left because he disconnected his gift from the giver. And everybody in Scripture, and including ourselves, whenever we think about our purpose, we always want to, to disconnect the, the gift from the giver because we think we're enough. We think that our purpose can be found in just us, and then we can carry it out from there. But whenever we disconnect that from God, then we lose our purpose. And then we lose sight. But what we see as Christians is that our gift and our abilities and the things that we can do all come from God. So our purpose, well, we might not know uh, exactly what we're going to do. There might not be a blueprint. You know, when we're born, it's not that, you know, as soon as we come out of the womb and things like that, you know, the doctor doesn't stamp doctor on our forehead or pilot, or actor, or surgeon, or things like that, we have, a, we have the choice. And God's given us the choice to use our gifts and our abilities to glorify Him. And many of us wonder, I know this seems kind of vague to you, think, Christian, this is a vague message, so you're just telling me to follow God and then there's my purpose? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, your, your purpose might change as you grow older as far as careers. And, and I think that's the question we have to stop asking ourselves is what's my career, but your question that you need to be asking is, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? And your purpose is to glorify God, it's to follow God, and it's to abide in Him, and it's to go through Him, uh, or go through His ways, and, and to, to not try to just do life on our own apart from the gift giver. And we wonder what we're, our gifts are supposed to be. Sometimes the simple question that we need to do is just ask, right? We see in Matthew uh, seven uh, verses seven through eleven says, "Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who receive, or who, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, who is the son asked for bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven?" Give good things to those who ask Him. And so that leads us to what we have kind of here on our final three points. You know, that we are created by God. And God wants us to ask. God wants to have communication with us. He wants us to pray. And a lot of times we don't know our purpose because we haven't been connected to God. We haven't been connected to the source of the giver. You know, many times I remember growing up, if I would be hungry, if I wanted a snack, if I wanted... A toy if I wanted to go and do things uh, I wasn't always told yes but there were times that, that I could have done those things and all I had to do was ask my parents and they would say yes or they would say no but I never asked because I was always afraid that I didn't or I wouldn't hear the answer that I wanted but many times we need to just ask we need to just ask about our gifts you know how many of us have actually gone into prayer and said God I don't know what my gifts are but I just pray that you would reveal those to me and through that process of reading scripture and praying God will reveal that to us. So we need to know first and foremost that we are created by God. So if we're created by God, then we're created for God. The second point we see is that we are created to know God. Right? Our purpose isn't just to do the things we enjoy, but our purpose is to, to know that we are created by God and to know God. Not just to know about Him, right? not to know that He's just this big great guy in the sky who could smite us with lightning if He wants to, but really know the God of the Bible. Read Pray, spend time with one another in Scripture and, and grow with each other because we are known to, or we are created to, to know God and to love God. And finally, the third point, I'll leave you with this. You are created to praise and glorify God. That is your purpose, is to praise and to glorify God. So don't, don't get caught up in, am I supposed to be a doctor? Am I supposed to be a nurse? Am I supposed to be an engineer? You know, where am I supposed to go to college? Am I supposed to play this sport in high school? This and that, and all these questions... They're good questions to ask, and they're good questions to think about because probably in those questions you know that you have the gifts and the abilities to do those things. But like Moses, 
like Paul, like people we see in Scripture and people now, the more we're connected to God and the more we're connected in, in Scripture and in prayer, God will reveal that to us because God speaks to us. God loves us and He wants us to praise and to glorify Him because that is the number one purpose for anybody. And so, yeah, you might be the next Michael Jordan. You might be the next Beethoven. Um, but know that even in those things, your identity isn't found in your gift. It's not found in your career or your profession, but your identity and your purpose is found in the giver. Let's pray, and then we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. God, I just pray that you would reveal gifts in us. You would reveal purposes. You would reveal things in us that we might glorify you. God, we have big questions that that can't be answered by blueprints, that can't be answered by Google, that can't be answered by uh, even time that we have on this earth if we're apart from you. So God, I pray first and foremost, before we even think about what we're supposed to do when we grow up, I pray that we realize that we're supposed to grow closer to you. I pray that instead of thinking about the career that we're supposed to take, that we would learn that the most important thing is that we stay connected and grounded in you. And so God, I pray for anybody who's watching this right now, or anybody who's not, Lord, that they would know that they're loved, that they know that they were created by God, that they know they were created to, to know God and they were created to praise and to glorify you, God. So God, we, we just lift your name up tonight. We just pray tonight. We just get together and read scripture tonight just to know you more and to glorify you more. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who laid that, that path out for us, that we can know our purpose. And then we can know that we're created to love you and that we're created to be image bearers of Christ so that we can lead other people to know their purpose too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.